Hey, what's going on guys? I wanted to make this uh, interesting video on postage in the United States. Now this only pertains to the United States, um, but it's very, very interesting. Basically what I have here is a book of stamps and these are all individual three cent postage stamps. Okay, with that uh, teapot on there. And I have a letter, which I had mailed within the United States and only cost me three cents to mail this letter. How is that possible? When first class mail, if you want to grab a, a letter and mail it to someone, it would cost you 46 cents, right? Well, that's why I'm making the video. Something that a lot of people don't know is that you can still send non-domestic mail within the United States for three cents. Now there's a specific amount, I think it's two cents per half ounce, but the average letter with a piece of paper in there is gonna cost you three cents in postage. Now I wanna kinda of break this out and explain exactly why. Why is that, how is that possible? You know, if postage is 46 cents, how are you mailing things for three cents? Well, I'm mailing things outside of the government. And there's a specific way you need to address your mail if you want to mail something non-domestic. Domestic basically means within the government. So what most of you do when you mail a letter, you're mailing something domestically. You're mailing something through government territory, through federal territory. Now, when you're a child in school in America, you're, learn, you know, you're taught how to address envelopes, you're taught how to write letters, things of that nature. And what they teach you is you know, how to write a, a letter to someone and they show you, you know, put the person's name, their address, put their, their, their town or city, and then you wanna abbreviate their state and you want to put their zip code, right? Because that tells you exactly where things are. So when you mail something through the postal service, they can find that exact address and deliver it. Well, there's certain things that make that letter go through a federal zone, such as abbreviating the state on an envelope means you're mailing it within the United States, you know, government. It's a government territory. The, the, the United 50 states is the government, but every single one of the 50 states is its own territory. So the idea here is to mail something not within the 50 states as a whole, but you're mailing something from one state to another state that has nothing to do with the government. Which is really interesting. And there was a set rate for, I believe it's two cents per half ounce and then four cents per ounce. Uh, so if you were sending, sending something that was fatter or heavier, you'd have to use the appropriate postage in that sense. But just an average um, you know, business envelope with uh, a letter inside is gonna cost you three cents as far as the weight is concerned. So basically this is, this is mailing stuff, uh, stuff non-domestic versus domestic, okay? Um, domestic is within the government and non-domestic is without the government. So when the government agency, um, the U.S. Postal Service was privatized in 1971, okay, the government uh, executive branch agency ceased to exist. And the duties and obligations uh, were taken over by the U.S. Postal Service Incorporated, which is now a private corporation. This is something I mention uh, as well to people privately all the time because people automatically assume that the Postal Service is a government job. You know, when it's shut down, oh my God, with the mail and everything else, no. The, the Postal Service has been privatized since 71, which means it's been a business. It's been government regulated, but postal employees are not government employees. They're union employees. There's a postal union. And then there's, there's, there's special cases where you could be like a highway contractor where you're not part of the union, but you still work for the Post Office. It's, it's it breaks down into other unique situations, but generally speaking, um, postal service people, you know, post post office workers and, and postal service men and women are not government employees at all. They just work for a private business called the United States Postal Service. But anyway, um, when they took over the private corporation, they also took over previous government agencies, as well as its inherited assets and liabilities, which include delivering mail within all 50 states um, that were uh, non-domestic. So basically what you have here is you have a, uh, a company. The United States Postal Service, you have to look at it like a company. It's like Home Depot or Lowe's or Walmart. It's just a business. But when they took over, they still have to deliver. They still have to, to provide services for that set uh, rate, that postage rate that was pre-existing. So what this means basically is if you address an envelope a certain way, you will pay different postage than if you address it how you were taught to address it in America. 
So there are a couple key things. Now I learned when I were to, to send this, to clarify this to anyone getting this letter, because you do run the risk of a, a mailman or um, a postal worker who does not know about this. And believe me, most of them don't. Most postal workers don't even know about this at all. But what I did to protect my letter and make sure it was not sent back asking for more postage, because sometimes they will be returned. It says, you know, more postage is necessary which is not true, they just don't understand it. So they're giving it back to you because they don't know what's going on. But if you put this on the top right-hand corner, exactly like this, okay, in this order, the first line you write first class non-domestic, and then underneath you write without prejudice, underneath that you write USC-1-207. The next line is BK.12, statutes at large. The next line is chapter 71, section 23, and the final line is 37th Congress, session Roman numeral 3. This will specifically clarify the code in which this, this law is, is set. So basically, if you get this, if a postal worker gets this and they're like, what, what is this? They give it to their postmaster, they kind of look up this information or they type this in and they go, yeah. Or some postmasters will know this. They'll see this and go, yeah, 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 it's fine, it's good. So you can see I do have, you know, this is postmarked. This was delivered for three cents. Now, a couple things you have to be very careful of when you're doing this. When you write the state for the, and I blocked off some of this information just because it, I'm, I'm not giving this information as to who I was sending this to because it was for business and it's private and it's not, not for me to give that information out. But anyway, um, when you write the state, you have to write the state out in longhand. For P, you cannot abbreviate a state. When you abbreviate a state on a letter, you're, you're saying that you're sending this through a federal zone, okay? By the way, this will not work when you are sending it to federal zones, such as prisons, courthouses, uh, schools. So you can't do it. Washington, D.C. as a whole is a federal zone. So this only works from basically private residences or businesses outside of federal zones, all right? But um, you have to write the state out longhand. You don't abbreviate the state, and you do not use a zip code. The zip code system was created... To, to basically narrow down different locations in within the United 50 states, okay, domestically under the US government. So if you're interested in this and you wanna send letters for three cents, just Google non-domestic postage in US or non-domestic mail. There's a bunch of websites that tell you how to do this. Um, some of them are like anti-government sites and it's a conspiracy, they're making you pay more than blah, blah, blah. It's not that, it's just information that you weren't given. There's information that they, that's out there that we are just not given for whatever reason, but all the postage that you've been spending all these years, you know, when you buy your stamp for 46 cents or in past years, it was cheaper, it keeps going up and up, right? You just didn't understand that you were choosing to use the postal service as a business as opposed to using the postal service to deliver your mail non-domestically outside the government's grip, pretty much. That's all it comes down to. But it's interesting. Now, I would not rely on this method, this method of mailing for very important things. If you're mailing a bill or if you're mailing something that's very, very important or, or time sensitive, don't do this. Because again, even though this is the law, legally they have to deliver this stuff, there's a lot of post, uh, post offices and postal employees that just don't know about this. They're just not educated in this because it is rare that it's ever used. So there's always a chance you'll get your letter return that says, you know, return for postage because they think that you don't have enough postage on there. They just don't understand what the law is. You can be, you know, you can be adamant and call the post office and say, hey, here's what the deal is and or just keep putting it in the outgoing mail and eventually someone will deliver it. But more times than not, these go through machines and, the, you know, letters are sorted through machines. So the machine will pick this up and they're programmed to to work like this. So. More times than not, you're not gonna have a problem with it, but I would not recommend doing this with very important mail. Although this is a great thing to know if you do have some kind of a pen pal, if you're writing letters to family somewhere in the United States, and every single time you send that letter, you're spending 46 cents, well, this is gonna save you a lot of money. Now you're sending letters for three cents. So that's really the reason why I wanna make this video. First of all, just to educate everyone as to, yeah, there are other options of doing things that we don't even know about. This is tip of the iceberg. There's a lot of different service type situations where you can save a lot of money, but we don't even know about it. This is something I thought was interesting. In fact, when I brought this up to everyone who I know, you know, who does postal stuff, it was news to them. They had no idea. And they thought it was pretty cool too. But anyway, just a little educational thing. Hopefully it'll save some money, some people money out there. 
um, if you are, you know, sending uh, letters often to people, like I said, family, friends, maybe a pen pal or something, girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever the situation is, this will hopefully save you a lot of money. So thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day, and I will see you soon. Take care.